We are Gold Ivy, a health company dedicated to simplifying health and wellness. Tune in as we search to find the deep, real, and raw truth. We're here to talk big, no room for small talk. It is our mission to inspire, seek growth, simplify the action steps, and build confidence. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. Are you ready to step into your power? Now is the time. Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. If you're a regular listener of the show or you follow us on social media, you know I, Brooke, just ran my first marathon and Andrea ran her 22nd state and her goal to run a marathon in every state. How did I go from barely getting out of bed to being able to run 26.2 miles? A customized training plan and coaching with Andrea. With my health concerns, it was important for me to make sure I crossed that finish line safely and confidently. We are so excited to announce that we are now offering customized training plans. Whether you're wanting to run a 5K, 10K, half, or full marathon, we've got you covered. Get your customized training plan plus coaching to get you race ready and keep you motivated along the way. Prior to receiving your training plan, you will meet with me, Andrea, for a 15 minute call to discuss your goals, race details, and schedule your three coaching calls. You will receive a training plan for your race, tailored to your schedule, endurance, and cross-training preferences like yoga, biking, strength, or whatever movement you enjoy. Coaching throughout your training will provide accountability, safety, and inspiration to keep you pursuing your training and race goals. With Andrea, you will connect your mind and body to maximize your race experience. And if you're looking for a custom training plan without coaching, we're offering that as well. Head over to the shop page on our website, goldivyhealthco.com, to learn more and get you across that finish line. Something that has made a world of difference for us and many people we know over this past year has been getting our groceries delivered right to our door. The ability to get local, fresh groceries without us having to step foot into a grocery store has been something we are so grateful for. Convenience, price, and quality are extremely important to us, and that's why we love and support Instacart. Instacart can deliver to your front door in as little as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area to help you save money, and every item is hand-selected by shoppers based on your preferences. To start your 14-day free trial and to get free delivery on your first order over $35, follow the link in the show notes to let Instacart know that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store ever again. And now to today's episode of Ivy Unleashed. Welcome back to Ivy Unleashed. We have an episode today that I have no idea what's about to happen, and neither does Brooke. <laughs> well, I do, because I just lived it for four days. Welcome to a surprise ride of being unleashed. Yes. And I say unleashed because not only are you listening to Ivy Unleashed, but I just attended Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power Within four-day virtual event it was 13 plus hours each day. Shit was intense, but it was so incredible. And I haven't had a chance to recap it pretty much at all with Andrea. And so we totally changed what we were going to record on. And I'm going to share with you some things that changed my life in four days. And when I say changed her life, I mean seriously changed her life. So hang on. In this episode, Brooke is going to get to some really juicy things. I would get Snapchats of her just like... <laughs> bawling or her dancing or having these epiphanies and she learned a lot about herself and her life her relationships and so uh she has this workbook that i cannot wait to to hear more about oh i'm so excited what is really awesome is tony robbins his whole like one of the biggest things he teaches is to change your psychology the way you feel mentally your mood your energy as you change your body and so to change your psychology, you change your physiology, the way you move your body. And so he's having us jumping. I've never jumped more in my entire <laughs> life. There's dancing. So it's all about really connecting the mind and the body. And that's what Andrew and I are all about. Mm -hmm. 
We're both health coaches. She's a personal trainer. Right now I'm getting my group fitness certification. We're about to launch Move, our own fitness platform, and offer classes. And this is the shit that we live for. And so it was so awesome just to get all of this knowledge on both, on not just psychology, not just mindset work, but actually going through these methods of how to rebalance your body, how to achieve homeostasis, um, to be pain-free, what to eat. The speakers he had on were just insane. And this is going to be good for me to process what I just witnessed (laughs) because I'm still in awe over here and I can't wait for to share. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you for doing it. I mean, this is something Brooke and I do all the time is we sign up for classes like this. We do seminars to push ourselves to grow, to get new tips for our clients. That's why it's like, if you're a client of ours, it's just never ending tips. (laughs) If you, if you want resources, you want ideas, this is what we do. We immerse ourselves and we reinvest in ourselves so that we can provide more value Mm -hmm. to our own clients, not only in our own lives, but for you too. And so uh, this is why Gold Ivy Coaching kicks ass. Yeah. (laughs) And what's, what's really cool is there's, so there was over, there's hundreds of thousands of people at this event and Tony Robbins, he only did live events and then COVID happened, right? So it would be like 10,000 plus dollars to attend one of these events. And then you pay for your ticket and it's all over the world. And so this was a way that so many more people could attend, which was awesome. Uh, But everyone there is from all different walks of life. The people that I met, you go in these breakthrough rooms. I'm meeting with people that finally came out that just transitioned into, you know, they're transgender. I met a woman who got in a car accident six years ago, has debilitating migraines, is getting her nerves burned off. Finally, two two months ago, it's working and she wants to live. A woman who tried to commit suicide and this is her last attempt. But what I found so valuable was so many people there are entrepreneurs. So many people there are CEOs of their own company that aren't even health related. But here I'm here for, yes, myself, but I'm here to share what I'm learning. And so when I say I filled an entire notebook plus a workbook, I was just immersed in this stuff. And that's what Tony says. You immerse yourself in these things that make you grow. It's like learning a language. You know, how many of us remember the language we learned in high school? You know, probably five words. But if you were to go to Italy for five weeks, you'd come back, you know, speaking pretty fluent. And so it's all about immersion. So these last four days, I was fully immersed in my apartment, my little apartment. I thought I was going to go crazy, but I, people from the outside looking in, in my apartment were like, this chick is crazy. I got 15,000 plus steps every day. How? You're jumping nonstop. So if anyone's familiar with a rebounder, right, it's like a mini trampoline. Mm. And the reason that they're so powerful is they drain your, your lymph system and your lymph system is what gets all of your toxins out of your body. And so, yeah, you're jumping to get your energy up. You're moving your, your state, uh, but you're also, there's so many awesome benefits. People there that are, you know, looked like they never moved in the last two years, had so much energy. People are flooding the comments about just how they have their energy back by just being in this man's presence, doing what he says. But he also has the coolest guests, right? So he, every day it started off with the Igascu method. And what that is, it's this method that's basically how to reestablish balance in your body. And it looks for the reason, not the symptom. What's the cause? And so Brian Bradley was this man. Incredible dude. Highly recommend it. Look it up. Instagram, all of our social media, E-G-O-S-C-U-E method. And they have a book called Pain Free. And it talks about your balance and how we are training. Yep. Andrew's sitting up straight. We're (laughs) training for the art of sitting. Sitting is not going anywhere, but you've heard sitting is the new smoking. Mm -hmm. And so by the end of the day, right, we're on the computer all day. Our shoulders are hunched over. We're crabby. Our bodies just ache. And when you think about when you are sad, when you're depressed, what's the state of your body like? You're drooped down. You're constrictive versus expansive when you're happy, when you're excited, right? You're up. And, and so all of us have developed this because we're sitting and we're slouching. And so he walks you through every morning all of these different exercises, which is how we're probably going to start 
a lot of the workouts at move because if you start a workout with your body unbalanced, you're, it doesn't matter. You're screwing things up. And he, it was so cool because he started with a picture of an ankle that was so messed up. And it was kind of just tilted, right? So it's on it. It's tilted. And he asked, do you think this man has hip problems? I think he has shoulder problems. Yeah, because this hurt and this is out of line. And then his ankle hurts and then his knee hurts and it goes up the body. And so by regaining that balance, the coolest exercises. I cannot wait to share with our clients and people who join our move community. It's going to be amazing. But so he was on this group called Embody. That's like all dancers. It's like literally che Tony's cheerleaders and they have you dancing. It's like Zumba. So that's how I got so much movement. And you're constantly learning information all day. And so they'd be like, all right, get up. And so then you'd get up and you jump and constantly moving. Super interesting because isn't there some science behind absorbing information, like actually being able to take it in your body. I know my pastor at my church, he does this thing where he'll say, say the person next to you, whoa, that's big. Or like, you know, whatever it is that he's about to say, or that he's just talking about, because it like wakes you up and then yeah. it makes you interact with someone. And then it's like, you're definitely paying more attention. It, it must have something to do with retention, doesn't it? Let me open my notes, shall I? <laughs> this whole notebook, I won't bore you all with it. But okay, so it's this idea of when you're in a peak state, you're in what Tony calls a dynamic state, and then your nervous system takes it and uses it. And so if you have information with strong emotion, it's going to stick with you. It's the same idea of behavior change. If your why isn't strong enough, if it's not tied to a strong emotion, it's not going to happen. It's not sticking with you. It's not strong enough conditioned in you. Yeah. And Tony, just from watching some of his seminars myself, he works with like, he worked with Conor McGregor and like all of these star basketball players, teams, takes them to championships. The mm -hmm. second he walks in a room and talks to someone for five minutes, they win a championship. And so he was talking about getting yourself in these different states where he talked about like the warrior versus the magician versus the king. Yeah, he didn't really talk about it in this one, but yeah. So he gets you in this state of you're a warrior. What does that mean for you? How do you stand? You know, what message are you saying to yourself when you're this warrior? You know, you feel like this badass. And then what happens when you're, you know, the king or like this more of like a romantic idea? And he gets you to really think about how powerful words are and how to embody them and, and get those sensations in your body so that when you do need to channel the warrior, channel it when you need it, when you're having a tough time, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, he takes these athletes to these insane levels and he does this with people that have addictions mm -hmm. or, uh, phobias. And so it's just the power of the mind and body coming together is so powerful. And he, in two seconds can change your life. Yeah. He also preaches, and this was one of my biggest takeaways, which I already knew, but he, ta and he talks about that too. There's a difference between knowing and owning. Like I know that I have everything I need within me, right? Like these last four or five years of my health have taught me like I'm the CEO of my own health, something that he preaches. But after this event, it was really like, no, no, no. Like I know. He always says, if you don't know, you know. And so it sounds like kind of crazy. I understand that. But when you really quiet that outside noise, which is what we talk about too, your body knows. And it's when we're in our head that that's when things just, it's not right. We're doubting ourselves. We're our best inner critic. And so when we're in our heart, when we're coming from a place of our heart, and that's what he's doing by getting you moving, getting you alive again so that you feel so good that then he throws all of this shit at you. Like you're doing these deep reflections. You're looking at, you know, how have I been spending my life and um, your basic human needs? And are these really the needs and values that are true to me? Or is there, you know, one of the human needs is significance. And that was mine. And it was, you. everyone has two needs. There's six basic human needs that everyone has. It's certainty, uncertainty, love and connection is one, and then significance. And then two spiritual needs are contribution and growth. And a lot of people have certainty. Uncertainty is like you like variety, you like spontaneity. And for me, it was love and connection and it was significance. And but my significance was above my love or connection. So I had to feel significant 
in order to feel loved. Mm, interesting. So it was these deep work that you do with him and then what's really going to fill you up? What's really going to make you fulfilled? He talks about science and then the art of fulfillment. And fulfillment is that growth and the giving. And so that was one of the realizations I had is, okay, I need to switch around like these needs. I, if I want to feel a certain way, I need to give more. I need to prioritize love. You need to stop me, 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 me. When we suffer, we're in the me. Mm. There's no we. And so when you look outside of yourself, so he talks about how he can do all of this work. He can get on stage because of his mission, because it's not about him. And he's that, trying to feed millions of mm-hmm. people. Because yeah. he was. We fed like 1.5 million meals or donated everyone that bought a ticket. So that was so cool. All of his books go to it. Because Tony Robbins had a really rough childhood, a really abusive childhood, no money, hardly any food. And so he's giving back. He also does human trafficking work. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible guy. Yeah. So the whole event, it kicked off with creating an extraordinary quality of life. And at that next level, what would that look like? What's getting in your way? What's the next action you need to take? And so that's kind of what we dove into. And then it was the success cycle. So it's potential action, results, certainty, and belief. And that's what gives us our potential. We think we have that potential because we have that certainty and belief in ourselves, but a lot of us are missing that belief in ourselves. And so we worked through belief systems, this Dickinson process, if you've ever heard of that. If you haven't, I highly recommend. It's this idea of making you feel so shitty if you continue believing this belief. And then you feel how good it is to flip that belief that you never want to go back. Same thing with finances, anything that you're wanting to change. Can you give an example of like what you did? So this was like probably an eight hour event. So I picked my top three most limiting self beliefs that like I know are bullshit, but I believe them. Right. So one of them was I'm not smart enough because I don't have the credentials. I don't have, um, you know, I'm not smart enough at gaining my health back or money or all these things that I have the evidence for, but for whatever reason, it stems from not being enough. And that was another limiting belief. And another one was about money and health and how in my health journey, it was very expensive. And so taking those three beliefs and then he walks you through kind of like a meditative experience where you're envisioning you believe that and what are the biggest consequences that are going to come from that 10 years 20 years you're staring at yourself in the mirror what are you losing what have you given up because you didn't chase that dream who are you hurting like i pictured gold ivy i pictured hurting your kiddos because you couldn't have your dream because of me like you know it takes you outside of yourself and and inflicting so much pain and how is your body and it's hunched over and 30 more years and you're looking in the mirror and i can't even do it justice but everyone is bawling and um and then he has you flip it and you break that pattern and so he has you do these silly ass things one was literally you say what that belief is in a silly voice because now you're like i don't want to believe this and so i'm like i'm not smart enough so you say it in a stupid voice <laughs> While you're swinging your hand and shoving your finger up your nose, <laughs> swear to God, just to make it like a disgusting yes, thought. Yes. This is this idea that you don't want to do it anymore. Like, I don't want this to be a part of me. And then you break that and you give yourself a new truth. And so for me, it was like, I have everything I need within me. I can, I will, I am anything I want. I have this deep belief in myself and you condition it enough inside yourself that you've you freaking believe that. Like I felt so powerful and it's this idea of anything you do, like repetition is king is really what I got out of this when it comes to building new habit. It's not, okay, I'm going to work out once a week and then twice a week. It's like, no, do a little each day because frequency is powerful. Repetition is powerful. So he talks about, you know, there's so much shit in the world. There's so much bad, but guess what? There's good too. But why do we focus on the bad? Because the reptilian brain, because that's what's the the two million year old brain in us, the news, what we're consuming, right? We all know this, but it's so conditioned in our nervous system that it takes that crazy disruption, that jolting your body, getting in that peak state. And so it sounds like a lot of 
not only recognizing patterns, but giving you tools to breaking them and creating new ones with like really strategic um, strategies that involve your body. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, it was... It was like all about massive action and getting specific and finding someone who can be that role model so that they can teach you, right? That's the power of these seminars is people that trial and error took them years and years are now condensing this, giving it to you. Same thing with working with a coach. We've done the work. We've learned from now the number one success coach in the world. And so we can then give that information and pass it on. Uh, We talked about what do you love? What are you passionate about? What do you hate? And what do you want more of? All of these super high level ideas. But when you're fully immersed in it and you're spending so much time, you realize like, I'm not living this way, but I felt so good. And you realize how quick that choice can happen. And, And he talks about we're one decision away from your destiny, right? Every choice you made got you where you are here. And by conditioning yourself throughout this whole process to get into that peak state where you do feel good, you are expansive, you do have energy, you feel like, hell yeah, I can do anything. Literally all they said was get up and dance (laughs) and you felt this way. So it talks about the science of momentum and that's what we talk about as coaches, right? Like you, motivation You can't rely on it. What you can rely on is that momentum and how you get that momentum is doing little day after day after day until it becomes you, becomes your identity. And so they have this model of the science of momentum. And step one is that peak state. You change your physiology, you change your focus, and you change your language. And those three things combined are what help get you in that peak state. So you have the power to change physically what you're doing, you know, if you're physically able. Your focus, what you what are you are you focusing on gratitude, appreciation, are you focusing on all the bad things happening? And then your language, how are you talking to yourself? And so those three combined are your peak state. Then for momentum, step two is find your passion, which is what I kind of talked about. What do you love? What do you hate? What are you passionate about? What do you want? And then step three, I found super powerful as a health coach, was decide, commit, resolve. Procrastination is the enemy of success, of action of all the things we want. You need to decide. And so this process got me really good at just making decisions, which I'll share with you kind of what decisions I made by the end of this, but decide big ones, Yeah, (laughs) decide, commit to it. Right. So what is that action I'm going to take day after day after day? And it doesn't have to be a big action. It can be something little so that again, I'm conditioning that in my body and then resolve when you're laser focused on something, nothing else matters. Right? Like when I see I need to serve these people, I need to get this message across because like, shit, this was life changing for me. I need to share this. And so anything else isn't an option, right? Like you, you get a cancer diagnosis and what do you do? You change everything, the way you eat, the way you act, who you surround yourself with, anything you need to do because your life is on the line. And that was one of my biggest takeaways is like, shit, I have one life to live. And I've been living so much of it in pain and suffering. And this whole time I snapped my finger and I was happy. Like I saw people on the screen like smiling and yeah, you've seen videos of me smiling and you know, everyone can smile when they need to, but like that pure joy that like when you're in pain, like that, that's not conditioned in me anymore. Like what's conditioned in me? Like, oh, what is this symptom now? Like, what is this trying to tell me? Like I'm the detective and I got so far away from the gratitude, the appreciation of life and how blessed I am. And every gratitude practice I had was just to help me feel better. And I didn't feel like I was getting enough out of it. And so seeing and hearing these people's messages and the stories of, you know, a guy that didn't have legs and had one arm and the way he viewed the world. And he's like, I still get 20 minutes of activity in like, I don't have legs, but I can still move my body. Like I'm not in a wheelchair. Things that just, oh, they put things in perspective. And we have the choice to surround ourselves with things that help us feel that deep sense of gratitude. So when your why is strong enough, and I got really reconnected with my why is I have one life to live. And do I want to live it suffering when I have all of these free resources, all of these people that love me, that care for me? And yeah, it's not easy, but it could be a lot harder. And me telling myself it's hard, is that serving me? 
right? So questioning what you're telling yourself and these limiting beliefs that you don't even realize are limiting beliefs until you realize how much they've held you back. That's so powerful. Like gets me in my feels thinking about how we can get wrapped up in these patterns of thinking of these negative thoughts over and over and the cycle of your life and the things that, like you said, you don't even realize are holding you back because you haven't had time to sit and reflect. You haven't had time. I mean, every person that has had a moving situation in their life, a pivotal moment, it's required this deep reflection. You know, we just got off the phone with two upcoming guests that have these stories that they have had to reflect and fight for their life and their well-being. And it, I think, takes that, it takes diving into how am I going to do this? How am I going to live this life? Who is my support system? And what am I going to say to myself to get through these tough times, right? And I think maybe if you don't have a super, super challenging situation, you can get stuck in these tiny details of life that you can complain about or fight about or or beat yourself up about or whatever. And it, it's just these cycles and patterns that we don't realize we're in mm-hmm. and that we're stuck in. You know, you see someone's life and you're like, I'll never have that. Or I could never do that. But it's like, you absolutely can. Mm-hmm. Like he said, you know, these decisions you're making, you know, I was thinking to myself today, like, I'm tired of my own shit. Like, I'm tired of having this cycle where I, you know, had a couple too many beers and then I'm too tired to get up too early and then I feel bad about it. And it's like, then change it. Mm-hmm. Have a glass of water. Go to bed earlier. Stop saying the same thing over and over and change your behavior. Change that cycle. And it could be with anything. You know, mm-hmm. it could be with not fitting in your workouts or self sabotaging in the pantry with a handful of chocolate all the time or whatever it is. It's like, when are you going to get tired of those decisions you keep making that are holding you back from feeling good or having that joy or experiencing life the way that you know is possible? Cause you do see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I posted this yesterday or the day before, cause it really resonated with me is the power of leverage when we want to make a change because it's what we hear as health coaches with the clients that we meet is there's enough leverage and that's what gets them to actually make that decision to change and then it comes the repetition and the accountability and you know to help make it a sustainable change but what i mean by leverage is you're sick of your shit you hurt so bad you don't see another way or there's so much pleasure on the other side that you look forward to it and so many people they get caught up in the pain of what it's going to take to make that change and not if they don't make that change so creating leverage for yourself right it's really and that leverage can be outside of yourself like so many people I talked to that want to lose weight it's for their kids that's powerful leverage and so getting behind either what it's costing you to not change or what the inaction is costing you. What are you missing out on? You can absolutely have everything you want if you want it bad enough, but you're giving yourself these excuses and it takes getting really real with yourself to be like, what are these excuses? Because that's scary. Instead of numbing, I'm holding myself back. Instead of numbing and distracting and blaming it on your life's too busy and people need you too much and you your job overworks you or requires too much of you, like quieting the noise because people don't, because they actually are afraid of taking action. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of failure. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was the biggest thing that holds people back is fear of failure. And that's what Tony went through. And that was a lot of people's limiting beliefs is what if I don't make it or, you know, who am I going to become? Who am I going to lose if I become this person? Like if I do get rich, are my friends and family still going to be my friends and family? Like all these questions that we ask ourselves that we don't really realize are holding, holding us back. It's just funny how everything comes back to failure. And that's the most powerful lesson is what didn't work and how can I learn from it? So really not being afraid of failure, knowing that if it, it's not, I didn't fail if I learned something from it. Yeah. I think people think sometimes they, you know, they, they want someone in their life to take good care of themselves and they think the person's afraid to work hard or they're afraid of effort. They're afraid of like, they're afraid to put in the work. And it's like, no, they're afraid that they'll start doing the work and they'll fail at it. That if they start making the, this momentum and then they can't anymore because they get sick or 
they're tired or have an off day, that that means they failed. And so it's it's not that people are lazy. Mm-hmm. I think a lot, like most people work pretty hard in some capacity in their life, whether they're working hard to keep their family afloat or their house paid for or food on the table. Like most people are not that lazy. But when it comes to prioritizing your well-being and your mental health, your mental state, people are fearful of not being able to keep up with it because then that would mean that they failed at this again and then they would beat themselves up and it's this cycle. Yeah. Something that I thought was awesome that Tony shared was so many people spend more time planning their vacation than planning their life. I'm like, ooh, yes. Like, what is the roadmap to your life? Where do you want to go? Some people think that's way too controlling or, you know, we've talked about before, like messing with God's plan. But what was so cool is like Tony believes in God. There's different spiritual leaders. Like he does not preach, believe one thing. It's all this, like your intuition, your inner knowing, and that any pull you get of, nope, this is right. You need to listen to that. Like that's your answer. And that's why when he says, when you ask, or when you say, I don't know, you know, so you're not asking the right empowered questions. And so that's something that I've noticed myself just one day in is, you know, today we're like, oh, okay, things are not going well with whatever. And instead of beating myself up, I'm like, what would be a better option? Okay, what what, what could we try? Mm-hmm. And so you start to notice because now, the, again, these things have been conditioned to me. I'm aware of them. And so those triggers, I can be like, mm, 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 mm. Another really cool thing that you guys may think is crazy, but I know a lot of you listening um, have a really good relationship with your snooze button like I did. And so you may find this helpful. So Tony, his stories were incredible. And he told this story about how one of the conferences that he led right behind it was a train track and he didn't know that. And so during the conference, this freaking train every 90 minutes would go by and he could see people getting angry and upset and frustrated and he used it as an opportunity. He's like, all right, every time that goes up, we're going to celebrate. Like we're five years old seeing the first train. <laughs> He's like, everyone sees a train, right? You're running late. Oh, damn it, that train. But when we were younger, that train was so exciting. Right? It's all about our mindset, our perspective. And so sure enough, every 90 minutes, those people, when they heard the train, they got up, they jumped up. And they conditioned that annoyance, which what once was annoyance, is now my cue to get in that peak state get excited and energized. And I'm like, I'm going to use that for my alarm clock. That's going to be hard as hell at first. <laughs> it's not going to be hard because that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> and so yesterday morning when it went off, I got up, I shot up. I'm like, like my life depended on, I'm like, I'm conditioning this in my body. I'm sick of waking up and going, uh, because how is that starting my day off? Like crap. I made a playlist. That's all peak songs, songs that make me feel good from the event, like what ways can I change my environment? Can I change how I'm viewing things, those triggers to make this easier on myself? Because who doesn't want to feel better? Right. So that was just something cool that (laughs) probably sounds crazy, but it's hard to put this experience other than crazy or how you're acting in other words. Um, But I want to be mindful of people who have a different connotation of that word Um, and know that it's something that I'm working on. It's not saying that I noticed that I've said it a lot in this episode. And so I just want to make, make that call out. I love that you said that, but I also think it's hard to, like you said, put this experience in words because the whole point is almost to make you feel crazy. Mm -hmm. It's almost to make you feel like, and as far as crazy goes, just, I would never do this. Or if somebody saw me doing what I'm doing right now, they would think that I am, you know? And so I think the whole point is that Get out of your patterns, Mm -hmm. get out of your head, do something that feels weird and silly to show yourself that anything's, anything's possible. Like I can like actually move my body. Like Kara Hatch tells me to like move my body weird to get these emotions out of me. Mm -hmm. And it does feel weird the first couple times you do it, but there's something about moving your body that does change how you feel. Yeah. And you know, they, they talked about this 90 second rule of letting the emotions go through you and psychologists that we've had on, they've talked about that too. And so it's not toxic positivity. And, you know, they didn't really touch on it during this 
seminar, but during it, it was something I was saying is, you know, the critics, the people from the outside looking in who are like, this, this is woo woo wee, you know, like what would they say? And toxic positivity is one thing that came to my mind. But when you feel so good from, you know, what you're being taught, how you're moving your body, the, the tools that they're giving you, like that's your truth. And so they would say, you know, when you go home, but you're already home because it's in Zoom now. But back in the day when they have events, that was what people worried about is, okay, how do I go home and explain this experience to my significant other? Because they say something and then I dim my light. Oh yeah, you're right. Because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's taking your power back and not feeling guilty about it. But also recognizing that we live in a world where the news is constantly flooding our brain. Negative people are. We're looking at everything that's wrong. And so when we do get in these environments, it is out of the norm. But it's what makes us feel good. And we have to take that power back to feel good. Ta- taught me that the only one that can control how we feel is us. And we have to want it. And if we want it, we'll find the way to get it. Successful people are resourceful people. And I'm hella resourceful. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and so that was something that I took away too was if you think you'll find a way, you will find a way. Mm-hmm. That like makes me emotional to think <laughs> <Why>? about that. <laughs> because, I, because I'm trying to create something for my family. And I remember when I was thinking about starting Gold Ivy and, and talking with Justin about it. And he said, I, I know you'll be successful. And I was like, Wow, I do too. And I and I think it's cuz I know how to work hard and I know that I won't stop until the messages I want to get out in the world are out. And the train keeps moving and it keeps going because there are more messages that need to be put out in the world and I do feel like there are resources out there. There's so many stories that need to be told and seminars like this that we can learn from and share with people and I don't want to stop. I think when you have your why, and my why is that I want to provide beautiful things for my family and moments that you don't stop. You make the decision not to stop until you have what you want. And what I want is the ability to take my kids anywhere on the planet and show them the world and have time with them. It's just one of those things where you can let so many things get in the way you know, oh, I'm busy. Oh, we have this going on. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, we're sick. Oh, we can't afford it. Whatever. Imposter syndrome takes over. There's so many things that stop you. But once I think you get that dream in your mind and you know that you want it, you have to make the decision to just keep going. Like don't stop until you're on that path. And it so much gets in the way of you remembering that path day in and day out, right? Like exactly what you're saying. And so committing to these things that are going to help you remember, like these seminars, like working with a coach, like having that quiet, reflective time daily, the morning meditation where you are so aligned and connected with yourself that you can be intentional because you know who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, I think the future gets... It, it seems really far away. And so focusing on that next level and that next level and that next level is what I'm personally doing. What we talked about in this seminar is, okay, that next level, because then you have that evidence of success. And then that's what helps kind of respin that potential. And so creating those small goals, it's the same idea of small steps of your confidence, believing in yourself, keeping those promises that you make to yourself um, but the last day was touched me the most because it was all about energy. It was about health. And if you don't have your health, you have nothing. And most people realize that because they don't have their health. They get to that point. And so, you, you know, Tony and he had on all of these amazing people, doctors, um, cancer survivors. Again, the guy that had, I can't remember his name, but he had no legs, and no arm. And now he's a motivational speaker going all around the world talking about not only mindset, but health and cleansing your body and the toxins that we eat and how to make it approachable for anyone. Like you can take any of this information. You don't have to be rich. There's so much of misconceptions and that's something we're aware of with coaching is it's expensive to be healthy. If that's what you tell yourself, 
right? So thinking about health and energy and how important it is from just making one decision, right? Thinking about that why and taking a step back to get in line of why you're doing what you're doing, whether it's so simple of how you're eating, how you're nourishing your body, how you're moving your body, who you're surrounding yourself with. It's, it's got to be bigger. You have to have that strong why of what's your purpose. Yeah, I think the the missing piece is like, you know, you can listen to all the podcasts. You can listen to hours of information. You can read the books, but it, integrating it into your life and not giving up. It's like you keep saying, it's basically creating these new patterns where you are showing up and it it is new. It's not the processed cookies that you're used to grabbing now you're not going to get them and then you're going to want to and then you got to get out of the grocery store without them or you're in your house and you want to prep the salads and it's like uh but you just do it until it's just something you do and it's like over and over showing yourself that this is a new thing to do and it it feels kind of painful and a lot of effort but it's not it's just another decision it's just a different one they talk about you turn your shoulds into musts I must do this. This is a done deal, no brainer. You're deciding, you're committing, you're resolving. And the, the strongest force of anything we do is our identity. Tony shares this example of if he were to ask you, what, what brand of cigarettes would you want? You'd say, I don't smoke, Mm -hmm. right? I'm not a smoker. And so many people are like, oh, you know, I'll quit. I'll go down to a couple packs or, oh, I just smoke when I'm with my friends or, you know, and, and then the same thing with losing weight. You, he's like, you've, I've met people that have lost 10 pounds a hundred times, or I've lost a hundred pounds, hundred times, whatever it may be. And it's because these things don't become who we are. And so I was thinking about my health journey and how I had to change so many things, right? Like I was raised on processed food, like all of us were, and not being able to eat gluten or dairy and telling people that in restaurants, like I had so much shame around like, I don't want to be that person. Or people would ask me like, what can you eat now? And I'd feel so bad about it. And that was my health. And then it became who I am. Like, I just, I don't eat those things. Like They make me feel like shit. I choose not to feel like shit. And it was so hard to get to that point. But over time, repetition, keeping those promises I was making to myself, it became my identity. And became my identity because I knew it was what made me feel good and it's what helped me feel alive. So identity, strongest force. Mm-hmm. It needs to become a part of who you are. I'm curious what the most like powerful moment of this whole thing, I mean, this is hours and days. Like what was the most powerful life-changing lesson you feel like you took away? Yeah, that's a good question. And I apologize for anyone who's listening who's like, this girl's jumping all over the place <laughs> because it was so much stuff and I haven't embodied it yet. I I know it, but I haven't owned it yet. I've owned some of it and I'm putting it into practice. Um, but you know, throughout the, all four days, people are having these massive breakthroughs of, you know, someone said something and it really resonated. I know I need to make this change. I was crying so hard and I just, it spoke to me on a level I I never even, I've never even experienced. And so all of it, I'm like taking all these notes. I'm like, I love this shit, Mm -hmm. but I'm not having any like major breakthroughs. Like this whole event is a major breakthrough for me. And then the last day, what I was telling everyone is all about vitality and life and health and energy. And one of Tony's guest speakers was Siri Lindley. And it's this incredible woman who at the age of 26, she, her whole life was an athlete And she was in her college dorm and she had developed severe OCD and she couldn't even leave without, you know, hitting the door 10 times, doing her counting. And she finally got over that, went through therapy, dealt with some some things. And then she came out as lesbian and she's like, oh gosh, okay, now I have to, you know, figure this out. Okay. All these, you know, what at the time she was looking at setbacks and then she got super into exercise. She already had been, but she decided that what helped her was exercise and she wanted to she had this idea this download this internal knowing that she wanted to be the world's greatest triathlete she didn't know how to swim (laughs) and so she pushed herself she hired the best coaches she became an olympian long story short she did the damn thing and so she's telling this incredible story and then she got cancer and after 
you know, throughout this whole journey, she had been going to Tony's seminars and hearing his things. And so she had conditioned these things in her body, like I'm telling you guys today. And so she used this to help her through her cancer journey. And after that, she's going through Date with Destiny, which is another one of Tony's programs. And so I'm like captivated by her story, right? Like it's hard not to be. And then all of a sudden something switches. And she talks about how Date with Destiny, you know, she had all these setbacks, but the one that was setting her back the most and holding her back was being in a suffering state, uh, the relationship with her father. So when she came out as gay, she, two years, she didn't really tell her family and her dad called her one day and he's bawling on the other line. She's like, dad, dad, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Did something happen? And he's like, please tell me you're not gay. Please tell me it's not true. And she's like, in that moment, I knew either I listened to who I am and I put myself first or I put everyone else's needs before mine. And I live and I hide. And so she said, yeah, dad, it's true. And he immediately hangs up. For two years, she didn't talk to him. Wow. And then he would call on holidays and she'd just literally bitch him out, she said. Like, she'd just scream at him. She was so angry. She had so much hurt in her. And she accomplished all of these things. And, you know, I, at the time I didn't realize it. But now looking back, I resonated with her because that's what I did. That's why significance was my need because I didn't have that growing up. I always longed for my dad's approval and to be smarter. And if I accomplish things, he'll love me. And these stories as a little girl that I told myself that weren't true, but I conditioned those in me. And so she's telling her story. I'm resonating with it. And then she says she goes to Tony's date with destiny and everyone's having these massive breakthroughs. She goes outside, she picks up her phone. She's like, all right, it's all about the decisions, making the decision. She calls her dad. Dad, I need you to know I forgive you and I hope you forgive me and I love you and I want to thank you for being exactly who I needed you to be for me to become the woman I am today and I'm doing really well and he's like, thank you. And the relationship, because of that one decision, fully, now it's thriving. And I was like, (laughs) felt gut punched. And like, that's my decision. Like my decision isn't to not eat the sugar. It's not to wake up at 5 a.m. These things that I'm, I'm trying so hard to do because I know they make me feel good. It's that one thing that's holding me back and it's not fully forgiving. Like that's why I'm suffering because I'm resentful. And now I'm at this place where I realize that everyone did the best they could with what they had and that no one does things to hurt people. They do it because their own needs weren't met. And so this was like 2 p.m. I'm like, shit, okay, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this. Um, by the end of the day, I had my dad's email. I haven't talked to him in four years. I emailed him a few times before that. I hadn't talked to him in years and years and years. If you're a regular listener of the show, you know, I've talked about my journey with that and just coming to terms with that, going through therapy, healing that relationship with abandonment and so by the end of the night, I'm, I'm exhausted, but this is still in the back of my head. And I'm like, Brooke, it's, it's just a decision. Like, you already decided. Like, you just have to hit send. You don't even have to have a conversation. I don't know his phone number. So I did it. And when she said, thank you for being exactly who I needed you to be for me to become who I am. I'm like, yeah, if, if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have this. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. And that's a choice. Like, I can choose to look... At all of that, because of him, I have this. I have, you know, relationships with people around me, better relationships that I nourish and whatnot because of him. Or I can choose to look at the fact that he wasn't there and what I lost all these years. Like, it's a choice. And one makes me feel like shit. And one makes me feel so full of love and extending love, which in return gives me love. And I'm like, okay, I got to do it. And so... I looked at the thing probably for an hour before I hit send, rereading it and rereading it. And it was the simplest email ever of, I need you to know I forgive you. I hope you forgive me for anything I ever said or did that may have hurt you. And thank you for being who I needed you to be for me to become who I am. And I need you to know I'm doing really well. And I started a company and I gained my health back. And now I'm helping people gain their health back. And I'm always here if you ever want to talk. And that was it. And now I'm crying. (laughs) And it was so weird because in that moment, I'm like, I can't say dad. Like, 
do I dress it dad? Like, do I say love at the end? So then I started getting in my head and I, and I said, you're getting in your head. You need to get in your heart. Like, that's what I've learned throughout this whole thing is when you're in your head, you're dead. And that's what Tony teaches. And it's so true. And so I hit send. I'm f- shaking. I'm freaking out. I'm FaceTiming Andrew. She's like, holy shit, you just did what? <laughs> and, and then I went to bed and I said, if I never get a response, like forgiveness is giving up that suffering, that pain, deciding, making that decision that I'm not going to suffer anymore. And two hours later, I got an email back and it was the simplest, perfectest, that's not even a word, but (laughs) (laughs) best email I think one could get was just, thank you for reaching out. And if I could redo things, I do that much different. And as I'll like, I want you in my life always. I don't know where things are going to go moving forward. But I made a choice in that moment to end suffering for something that held me back for 20 plus years because I looked outside myself and I thought about, he isn't doing this to hurt me. Maybe he's hurt. But in return, because I'm resentful, I'm hurting. And that's a choice I can let go. And so if this resonates with anyone listening, it's not easy choices. But it's all a choice, how we look at things, how we view things, how we internalize things. We have the choice to do the things that set us free and make us feel good and live the life of our dreams. And there's always an answer if you're resourceful, if you believe in your ability to figure it out, to end your pain, to get people in your corner that can help you, that are rooting for you and and helping you along the way. I went into these four days so excited to learn so much about mindset and mastery of your decisions and your habits and knowing I, you know, Tony just came out with a book called Life Force that's all about cutting edge research on your health and your energy and that's the shit I live for. And it changed my life in a way I didn't even know was possible all because I was open to it. I was open to new information And whatever is holding any of you back listening, I I hope you're open to looking at things a new way. It may just be the ticket you need to set you free. Woo, Brooke. Wow. What is life right now (laughs) for you? I mean, think about it. Think of the last month of your life, you know, culminating your health journey with a marathon that you you know, you were resourceful. You reached out to all kinds of experts to help you with your healing and read books and tried things and pushed through. Like you're the definition of getting the resources and trying them, then listening to your body and reflecting and pivoting and all of this that you're talking about. It's like, I could see your experience through all of it. Like you, you came out and, and sent the email that people die before they send. You know, they go their whole life never sending that email. And like that, can you imagine what that email meant to him? You know, my whole life I always thought he's the parent. Like He should be sending these emails. He should be reaching out. And yeah, maybe he should. But I can reach out. He definitely should. Should have. Definitely. Like that is for sure. 100%. But I like that what you did was you realized what that belief was doing to you and your body and your mind and your soul, it was crushing you. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's a choice. The truth is he is the parent or was and should have sent you a goddamn email a long ass time ago. Okay. But you are bigger than any self-limiting belief and you squashed it with peace and love. And it probably meant the absolute world to his world and his soul. So I'm so proud of you. I hope you're so proud of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, we don't really talk um, small talk around (laughs) here. (laughs) We're going deep. Uh, But that's what sets you free, baby. Well, thank you for doing this seminar. It's part of, you know, our belief in our company is that you never stop growing. There's never enough information to gather We can always grow and push ourselves to new limits. And if you didn't do the seminar, 
this must have happened. And I'm just so happy that you did that. And I like something that Brooke and I do on all platforms, whether it's Instagram or TikTok is Facebook, wherever you want to find us, you can find us on all platforms is to share what we're really going through in a really honest way, clearly. And, um, if Brooke's message today resonates with you or you feel like somebody could benefit from hearing anything about forgiveness or growth or limiting beliefs, what's holding you back, please share this episode. I, our mission is to help people kind of set themselves free and embrace their life and get to know themselves. And that's exactly what Brooke did is she really dug into this. And so if this inspired you at all, please share it with someone that you feel like could benefit from it. Yeah. And I have a surprise for you, Andrea. What? Just because I love you so much and I can never do anything without you. <laughs> God. I want you to set yourself free. So I bought you a workbook. Ooh! So you can go through all of the goodies yourself. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh, You're I'm welcome. excited. I knew you would be. Oh. Well, thank Tony you, Robbins. Robbins. Thank you, Tony Robbins, also. Tony Robbins. God bless you. <laughs> you changed my life, man. And so many people. It's nothing new for you to hear. But I want you to know from my heart, you changed my life. And all of you listening, thank you for listening. And we're going to leave you the way we leave every episode with a piece of gold. Of course, this piece of gold is from the one, the only, Tony Robbins. He says, life is found in the dance between your deepest desire and your greatest fear. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold. <laughs>